There are a lot of nifty homemade sprayers for riding lawnmowers by my fellow YouTubers, but I figured it was time for Joe Novice to try his hand at building one. Like everybody else, the traditional manual pump sprayers are aggravating in that they don't cover much territory and they run out of pressure really quickly. There are occasions when I'd want to spray fungicide or insecticide or liquid fertilizer all over my lawn, which is pretty much impossible with a manual pump or even a backpack sprayer. This is just too many square feet for these small pumps to cover. So I wanted a spray rig to mount on the back of my riding lawnmower that would have a spray bar on the back that would cover about a six foot wide swatch and be connected to the 12 volt battery on the lawnmower. However, I also wanted to be able to use the same unit to do some remote spraying on areas where the lawnmower couldn't go. Here is the rig I came up with. Hang loose, I'm gonna give you some details. My particular lawnmower came with a bagger and the mounting hardware for it on the back of the unit. So I chose to build my spray rig around the bagger mounting structure. I welded a couple of stud bolts onto the bagger, which you can see here. Here is the wooden platform with pump components mounted on it. Since five gallons of liquid is pretty heavy, I screwed two of these buttresses on the underside of the platform. And I use uh, wing nuts to secure the cedar board uh, to the two stud bolts that I put on the grass catcher portion of the lawnmower. More details on these components to follow later. With respect to wiring, using the mower's battery, this shows how I added positive and negative wires onto the battery posts and ran the positive wire over to a push on, push off button mounted on the left fender where I could reach back to actuate the button. Not very attractive, but here are the two wires, positive and negative, as they come out under the fender and into a plug for connecting to the pump assembly. Now back to the components on the platform. On the left is a wireless switch, which I will detail later. In the middle is the 12 volt pump. It's a C-Flow Model 22. And on the right is the brass two-way shutoff valve. The shutoff valve allows you to select the spray bar on the back of the mower or a remote spray wand. Now for some detail on the spray bar. I used one half inch PVC pipe. The total length you see here from tip to tip is 38 inches. I recommend making it 35 inches total. I trimmed out some pieces of three quarter inch PVC pipe. I just happen to have gray PVC but white will work. Anyway I trimmed them out so that the half inch pipe would snap into them. Well here's how the uh, spray bar clamps into this three quarter inch pipe and holds it one side and the other and then you uh, just you can twist it and set it where you want it these ends are also adjustable I left them somewhat loose so adjusting spray patterns here's a close-up of the spray head I selected it's an adjustable 360 degree spray very easy to adjust with your fingers without tools. Here you can see the connection of the output going up to the pump's output and it comes over to the spray bar and of course comes out the end. Okay, here's the explanation of the outlet coming out of the pump. You can see the tubing from the pump. The output comes into a Y connector and I'm using this a little double shutoff valve one side here would, uh, will be used to spray the spray bar that's on the back of the uh, unit. But the other one here I, would, I can connect to a remote wand. And of course, uh, I shut this one off, turn this one on, I can use a remote wand. Now here are all the tubing connections in place. 
I use the yellow butterfly screw clamps for connections that may need to be removed occasionally and regular screw clamps for connections that are more permanent and not likely to need removing. All the tubings and connections are 3 8 inch which match the input and output connections on the pump itself. Now to the wireless remote spray wand. You won't need to fool with this if you only want a spray bar on the back of your mower but if you'd like a remote wand as well uh, you'll need to listen to this. I need to try and explain uh, the purpose of this little a 12 volt wireless remote. This is the device that enables me to have a remote wand that I can control with a garage door type clicker that came with the remote. Basically, uh, as I've shown you earlier, the power uh, goes through this main switch. It's a Here's a connector here, an old automotive connector that I keep around. Junk. And the way the uh, remote works is the remote itself is a 12 volt remote so it's always got to have power if it's going to work so the red wire as you can see is connected to the power and goes on to the pump now in order to stop the pump remotely i've got to interrupt i choose to interrupt the negative wire here's the negative wire going to the pump and you see i've connected a green wire to it and i've interrupted the green wire is going into the relay. It's uh, it's going to interrupt the power whenever I press the remote button. Now I still have to keep the remote wired, the hot 12 volts. So you can see it's got it's connected directly to the 12 volts. Now here's a diagram showing the wiring of the pump and the wireless switch component. With this arrangement, the wireless switch on the platform always has power to open or close the relay in the wireless switch. Until the wireless remote is pressed, the circuit is normally closed, like I said above. This allows the pump to run when the fender switch is pressed. When the wireless remote is pressed, then it will kill power to the pump, at, at which time the spray bar outlet on the brass two-way valve is closed by the operator and then the remote wand outlet is opened on the little brass two-way valve. Then when you press the wireless remote again, the remote wand will begin to spray, and the spray bar will not, because it's physically turned off. The operator can then carry the wireless remote with him for the remote wand spraying, and can be turned on and off at will. For the remote wand equipment, I took the wand off an old two-gallon pump sprayer, Fortunately, the tubing that came with the wand slipped right into the bore of the 3 8 inch tubing that was coming from the pump assembly. I put a clamp on it just to make sure it wouldn't slip out because this pump does put out a lot of pressure. Now here's the remote wand in operation, showing the on-off aspect of the remote clicker. Initially, the pressure the pump was providing through the wand was really too much. I think the factory must have had it set at the full 100 PSI. This caused some of the connections to leak when I used the remote wand. So I lowered the pump pressure on the Seaflow 22 by turning the pressure screw counterclockwise up to five turns. Now here's the intake tube that goes inside the big jug of spray solution. For lack of a better idea, I put this old piece of brass on the tubing to make sure it hangs down to the bottom of the jug. I also tie wrapped a piece of aluminum mesh over the end to act as a filter for the solution being uh, sucked into the pump. All right, here it is with the jug in place, five gallon jug. And uh, got a strap on it to uh, hopefully keep it in place. Goes out to the spray bars, there's the connection down there from the pump outlet and going around front you can see this is the tube that comes out of the, the spray that you're using goes down into into the pump and then out over there so that's the operation of what it looks like here it is from the other side you can see I've got my secure cord there 
And the seat does go down without hurting anything. Here is the spray bar in action. Oh yes, then there's this possibility as well. All you need is a spare 12 volt lawnmower battery and you're ready to go with your little red wagon. Thanks for watching.